It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm your host. I'm also one of the CFPs on the program. With me in the KFG studios, my business partners and fellow CFPs, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Is it okay to have a mortgage in retirement, or is that something you should avoid altogether if you are able? Should you work longer? Should you pay extra? There's lots to consider with this choice, and we're going to help you with this and more coming up on this hour of the Wise Money Show. That's right, and we've got questions from fans of the show. We're going to be hitting in the second half of the program. If you have a question or if you have a need, we are here to help. We're just Reach out to us. You can find us a few different ways. You can call or text us, 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Online, wisemoneyshow.com. You can reach us that way. There's a spot to even submit a question right there on the right. Um, or all over your social media, wherever you're, you are at, we are there as well. Just search the Wise Money Show. Okay, guys, let's get into that topic. A mortgage in retirement. Now, I here's my guess and I'm curious your guys' opinions on this. Um, we're going to go through some of the stats about how many people currently have mortgages in retirement. However, I think this trend is going to continue. I think there will, it will be more likely for someone to have a mortgage in retirement for a couple of clear reasons, in my opinion. Number one, houses cost more. So i.e., they're gonna, it's going to take more sacrifice to pay them off. Okay. But then second, there's been this crazy trend to refinance as interest rates have gone lower and lower. So if you originally had it staged where this thing was going to be paid off by the time you were 65, maybe you've refinanced and that term is longer and does it even make sense to pay it off faster. So before we get into whether it makes sense to have a mortgage in retirement or not, what's your take on this, guys? Well, I, I agree with those two reasons that you just gave. I mean, the, the first one being that just houses are more expensive, so you have a bigger mortgage. It's still a 30-year mortgage or it's still a 15-year or 20-year, but the payment that's attached to that house is so much larger and it may be squeezing out some of your ability to save for retirement. And so you, you may not be able to pay that mortgage off any faster. And at the same time, you may not be able to stuff as much money into that 401k at work. And uh, possibly, you know, it, it may mean that you have to work a little longer. Mm -hmm. It may mean that you don't have the opportunity later on, maybe after the kids are out of the house to start getting more aggressive on the mortgage. It can have a lot of ramifications, but man, what a tough time to uh, be buying your first house or upgrading your house if, uh, you, you know, maybe the, the kids have left the house and you're ready to to do something different or to have a second home. It's it's a tough time out there. Yeah. Yeah, I think we, as you get closer to retirement, though, you probably are either in the house that you've lived in for a long time and that's the one you're going to die in, um, at least that's the plan, or you've changed houses. And so you've, you've right-sized. You've gone from a big house to a smaller house, sometimes a big house to a smaller, more expensive house. Right. Yeah. Uh, I've seen that happen. But I, when I think about a, uh, having a mortgage in retirement, I, I just think a mortgage is a tool. So is a mortgage good or bad? And mortgage, uh, the, the, the concept of a mortgage is something that's allowed uh, so many Americans to a accomplish the dream of home ownership. And so I think a mortgage is a, is a really cool thing. Now, when you hear about the 50-year mortgages in California that are interest only, and um, these types of, of instruments, you might think, hey, you know, does that make sense or not? But I- Are this, you serious right now? Like those yeah, are a thing? Yeah. I, I remember a decade ago or so, they were talking about the 40, no, this had to be longer than that. Probably 06 before the real estate crisis, they were talking about a 40 year mortgage because again, prices were skyrocketing then. But right. uh, if you look at the stats right now, maybe maybe we can show uh, or drop the link to this article in the show notes in on YouTube if you're if you're there. But uh, apparently, there's a Forbes article that came out oh late last year. 10 million homeowners age 65 and older, this title says still saddled with mortgage debt, like it's this big burden. I don't know. I look at 10 million homeowners still with, with a mortgage at 65. I don't know. That's okay. Like, I, it, it doesn't, um, that doesn't scare me. I think if we look five, 10 years from now, that number is going to be higher. Mm -hmm. Well, on the other side of this, though, is if you look at the cost of carrying homes these days, 
we, we've had a nice stretch where uh, family incomes have been rising. The debt is down at a manageable level, and it's the craziest, lowest interest rates in history that a lot of people are locked in at. So the, the carrying cost of homes, they've never been more affordable. And so, you know, just hearing a, a raw number like 10 million people having mortgage and, and like you said, saddled, saddled with this, yeah. this debt, it does create a negative connotation. And I, you do wonder, well, how many of those 10 million, uh, like Kevin was saying, are treating it like a tool? Mm-hmm. You know, is this a strategy? Or sometimes we think of a mortgage as a consequence in, re- in, in retirement or a symptom of some, some kind of a, an issue. And it, if it was, hey, I rolled together a whole bunch of credit card debt and some parent loans and a car loan, and now I've got a mortgage and I, I didn't really want it, yeah. th- that might have some regret attached to it. Right. But I don't think that's most people. I, I think most people, as Kevin said, it may be that they upgraded their house while downsizing their house. Mm-hmm. They have a new mortgage, and maybe it's even a little bit bigger mortgage. But is it at a lower interest rate than they've ever had before and more affordable than, than before? Uh, t- to me, if in retirement they've got the income to cover it, then that's when it may be a tool. Yeah, right. Well, and I think of, you know, if this is a show about financial planning, you say, well, how many areas of financial planning would the mortgage touch on? And if you, if you run right around the circle and you say your present financial position, well, that definitely affects your cash and cash flow. It The next area is protection planning, I might want to keep uh, some sort of life insurance in place to pay off that debt in the event that I'm no longer here to work and and pay it off. Or for my surviving spouse, I might want to do that. The, the tax planning, it, there's definitely a tax planning piece. We're going to get into that a little bit later in the program. Yep. And then um, investment planning, when I think of a mortgage, do, do it do I have a better opportunity to invest elsewhere and therefore I'm putting money into investments versus paying down my mortgage? Retirement planning, what will my cash flow look like in retirement and how much money do I have to save towards retirement? And estate planning, if I have a million dollar house and a half million dollar mortgage on it, in my uh, estate plan or what's left over when I'm gone is netted out to the children. Yeah. So it, I mean, this is a this is a great uh, consideration when you're doing financial planning. Is how does this fit in each of the various areas that it touches? So what, the growing consensus that I'm hearing, guys, before we share kind of direct opinions, is it's okay. It's okay to have a. What, what's your thought? Is it okay to have a mortgage, or should someone feel this guilt or this weight or this that this was some consequence? I think I would say it's okay to. Work with your certified financial planner. <laughs> Dodge to no, no, because it, because if you should have a mortgage in retirement, then have a mortgage in retirement. Yeah. If you shouldn't, and that is ascertainable. That's not that that that's not airy fairy like out there. Like, well, you know, should I take my you know magic cube and try and come up with some answer? No, that's <laughs> it. That you can get that answer, and then the cool thing is, and I've seen this with lots of folks. You say, hey. This is a goal. I'm going to put this right in front of my retirement. And all of a sudden, you find people motivated like crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a client who retired, moved, built his dream home with a huge mortgage, which he could handle because he had pension yeah. money and he had yeah. the income to cover the mortgage. And then he got excited about paying it off and he started doing consulting work and paid that bad boy off way ahead of schedule. And it was a party. I yeah. mean, it was great. Yeah, uh, that, that makes me think of two stories. I'm going to share those with you coming up where you can find yourself in one of those stories. And we're going to talk about some ways to pay your mortgage off by retirement or early if that is your goal. So we've got that and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show. You're at the Wise Money Show channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you're made aware aware every time we drop new content. What you're watching right now is our weekly one-hour talk show that airs right here on this channel, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, every Saturday morning, also on podcast at the same time, by the way, and a few local radio stations where we're headquartered in northern Indiana, which is why the content is this long. All throughout the work week, though, we've got Next Wise Step videos taking one financial concept applying it directly to your financial life. So if you're all about 
looking at the various ways that financial decisions impact different parts of your financial life and making wise financial decisions from that perspective, this channel is for you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and if you like the content, like the content. Thank you very much. Okay, did you find anything out about the 50-year interest? Yeah, look at the Wise Money Show channel. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to throw up. You guys Uh want to see me throw up? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so, um, dude, it's a real thing. But, but here, 50 years and okay. interest only. Yeah, can but can I go on a rant here just a, just a just a, just rant, a little we'll, we'll Here's the thing. You the mortgage is never paid. The mortgage is never paid cuz even if I'm not paying the bank principal and interest, I'm paying the emperor to rent his land. <laughs> and I'm paying the emperor, you know, 4 or 500 bucks a month just to rent his land. Now, the cool thing is he's very forgiving. He'll let me not pay rent for two years, and then he'll take it all. Mm. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> so, so this is where the, the, mortgage, it, the, the mortgage is never paid. And so if you think about it, like I'm going to have a monthly expense to have a place to live. Forever. Forever. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are, I think there, are, there is a state that doesn't have property tax. They uh, just do higher sales tax and income tax in Alaska. Things. No, I th- well, I don't know, um, but I, I I think it's. Have it, you bought property there? No, not yet. But it, there's <laughs> I think it, there's like Oregon and Washington, and one has a s- state sales tax, and and one doesn't have a, pro- a property tax. Huh. So you, so you live, live in right the, on the edge. Yeah, you live on the edge, and where <laughs> you don't groceries. pay property tax and buy your groceries <laughs> in the other state. Clever. Nice. Yeah. All right. I want to get more into is it okay to have a mortgage in retirement. So we'll we'll hit more on that. And then and then the planning. So if you want to pay it off early, how do you do so? All right, second segment. Is it okay to have a mortgage in retirement? And if you have plans to pay it off sooner, well, number one, should you, with rates being so low? And number two, what are the best strategies to do so? That's what we're hitting right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn. And Josh Gregory, stay up to date on all Wise Money content. Find us online, wisemoneyshow.com, and then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there. Just search the Wise Money Show. Okay, so is it okay to have a mortgage in retirement? Let me tell you two stories. Number one, I've uh, been working with this, uh, this couple for, oh gosh, 15 years maybe. And um, we're contributing as the maximum amount to retirement accounts because they were very focused on retiring by a certain age. Actually, July of the year, they turned 66. Okay, that was the plan. And um, so we were max funding everything. And then cash flow got to a point where it was still tight. But they said, I, I, you know, what, is there anything else we should be doing for retirement? And I said, well, you guys manage your budget really well. And you're doing everything you should for for tax shelters, your tax shelter strategy. If you, and we ran the numbers, if you paid an extra, I think it was $431 a month on the mortgage, that thing would be paid off June of the year you turned 66. And Kevin, just like the example you shared, sort of what inspired this, Mm -hmm. so focused, so Mm goal-oriented that it was, I mean, they printed that thing out, put it on the fridge. And it. they knocked it out. Yeah. And they retired July. That thing was paid off in June. And we would, over the years, I would check in and say, hey, cash flow doing okay? Yeah, I think so, type of blah, blah. Well, do we need to make any adjustments? Nope, we're still making that payment. Mm-hmm. And it was right on schedule. Mm-hmm. So that's one. If you're, if you're goal-oriented and focused, that gamification, that, cl- that clarity from that goal can just laser beam, like get you so focused and, and help you achieve something that maybe you'd always wanted to financially. Now, the second is, uh, is a couple that he just retired last year, and they had four kids, and the last two were twins. Oh, my goodness. That's, financially, that's a lot. Okay, I'll just tell you right there. Four kids, the last two were twins. Uh, so they've gone through a lot. And, uh, and so anyway, they were in the house that they had, I'm sure it was beat up, right, from the kids and everything, and they were ready to retire. All the kids were out of the house. And uh, they wanted to downsize to the more expensive house. They still had about 75000 of mortgage on the existing property. And it was, all right, let's figure out the strategy to get this thing paid off. And two years ago, they pivoted and said, I don't think we're going to be staying in this house. I think mm. we're going to be moving. And they did. And they moved. And they now will have a mortgage of 125000 on the new place, the place that they can be in for a long time. They love it. They're happy. And the mortgage fits within their overall financial life 
and we don't need to worry about it. We'll we'll talk about well, do you just continue to make this, you know, this regular payment and stretch it out because interest rates are so low, or should we chunk it down? We'll talk about some of those strategies in just a second, but both of those scenarios work. So I'm gonna tell you, release yourself of the guilt. If there's any guilt about you having a mortgage, it's because you don't have the clarity or confidence that you're on the right track financially. I feel like I need to say that again. That's the key. A, a lot of people don't necessarily feel guilt though, they feel uncertainty. Yes. And, and not having that clarity and that confidence is because they don't have a plan in place. They don't really know what could they be doing differently. Are they going to be okay if this mortgage follows them into retirement? Because they've never run the forecast. They don't know what their nest egg is going to grow to, what their income streams are going to be in retirement. And so for, for some people, mortgage, there, there's fear attached to it. Yeah. And yeah. That, that sometimes is the motivator to try to get it wiped out early if they can. Yeah. That- there's a lot of guilt attached to that uncertainty, Josh. <laughs> okay, so because because Thanks Kevin clarifying. Kevin brought this up earlier, uh, you know, so a mortgage is a tool. Okay, but let's if we if we're more uh, categorical, it's either leverage in your life or it's bondage. And in truth, it really depends on your frame of reference and the mm-hmm. rest of your financial life, right? So what is that tool being used for in your financial life? Is it leverage where you just like this, these folks that downsize to the more expensive house in mm-hmm. retirement where uh, they both, no, she's got a pension and they'll both have you know good social security. So cash flow is gonna be great and they've saved up. Uh, the reason I hesitate is he had an option to lump sum his pension out and that's, that's what he did. So otherwise they would both have pensions. Um, so is it leverage where you're, yeah, that's, we can afford that monthly payment. It's no problem. The interest rate's tiny. Let's just pay this thing. Or is it bondage where you're, you're penny pinching and you're feeling the weight of, oh my goodness, if I don't make this, I've got to say no to a lot of things in my financial life in order to say yes to that mortgage. And it's creating this, this big pain point in my life. You've got to work with your CFP to get that clarity and build out a plan. Now, if guys, so so two questions. One, with mortgage rates being so low, should you even consider paying the thing off early? And then second, if that's your goal, what are the strategies? What are the best strategies to pay the mortgage off early or by retirement? Well, so th- there's two schools of thought on this. I think uh, should you pay it off early? For for many people over the past two or three years, low interest rates is the way that they're able to pay it off early. They've been able to refinance from that 30-year mortgage that maybe they were seven years into. Now they're on a 15-year mortgage at half the interest rate. And they know that there, there's a scheduled end date that's going to fit inside their working career. You know, I, It's exciting to see people who just know, if I just make my normal payments, if I keep living in this house and life just carries on one day at a time, I'm going to be debt-free. And it's going to happen before I even get to retirement. Those are people who, yeah, they're using a mortgage as a tool. It's a new mortgage as a tool to wipe out the debt even faster and have complete home uh, ownership, except for the real estate taxes, as Kevin was saying, um, in retirement. It eliminates a payment for them, and it it lessens the burden um, of cash flow in retirement. But for others, by keeping that maybe a 30-year mortgage in place, and even if it did last into retirement, that might be a mechanism for them to enhance the amount that they're saving for retirement. Mm -hmm. You know, smaller monthly payment on the mortgage means there's cash flow that's freed up. If you're intentionally doing this for the purpose of maxing out retirement accounts at work or in, in your Roth IRA or something, you're building up resources that will help carry the load of that mortgage in retirement and then some. Mm-hmm. And those are people that are using leverage. They're, they're using it as a tool to try to enhance their, their savings. I love the stories like you were sharing where people are doing both, though. Yeah, yeah, a- absolutely. Uh, so, oh, go ahead, Kevin. No, no, uh, so to me, it, should you pay it off early? Mathematically, I'm just going to tell you right now, mathematically, no, you, you shouldn't. I mean, the, like if you, if you crunch the numbers... You shouldn't, okay? However, your financial plan is not just about math. It's about your goals and all six areas of your financial life, how they fit together in helping you achieve those goals. And so if you're to the point where you say, ah, the debt feels like bondage or whatever, and you're looking, you you work with your CFP and you're on track for your other goals or whatever, then pay the thing off. 
Yeah, it's it, think art and science. The science is you should never pay your mortgage off. There are other investments that will do better than your mortgage. But this is where the art side of it comes in, or we would say the internal finance piece to say, how do you feel about having a mortgage? And usually, if you if you take a couple, there's one of the folks that says, yeah, I just, I don't like having a mortgage. It makes me uncomfortable. Now, in, in that situation, a lot of times the, uh, the other person has had to say, I really, I love mortgage. It's, it's the greatest thing ever. Because I want one, please. <laughs> in order to just kind of get away with having one. So this is this is where you, you don't want to be polarizing. You want to work with a, a certified financial planner who knows you and knows what's important to you. Because there is, what is your peace of mind worth? What's a good night's sleep worth? And I can tell you that mathematically, it's better to do to invest someplace else other than pay down the mortgage. But when you look at sequence of returns, um, I've seen people that were trying to use an investment instead of a mortgage, and it didn't work. All right. We've got mm-hmm. the strategies. How would you do it? We've got that and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Uh, good timing. And my, my cue worked. <laughs> I saw the finger that time. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> When Mike, you've got him trained. One? Yeah, when Mike gives you the finger, I, well, I'm just, you know. I'm just gonna cut you off. Like that's your final warning before I. Just... Yeah. No, I know. I I saw Mike almost yank it. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. And I'm like the shepherd's crook, hook, whatever nook. Oh. Is is coming out the thing that they grab you yeah. with and yank you off stage? All right. So we got to talk about some of the strategies to. To, to pay it off early. We've touched on them, but let's let's make it concrete so people it's okay, well, tangible. Let, okay, can we just uh I've created a list in there we can add to it. Um and and do we do we do a current event? Cuz to me the current event is listen, if you've got a mortgage and any other consumer debt, the 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 window at least for right now seems to be closing like if you if you needed to refi or thought about it you it has to be done or it the the you know the paperwork needs to be it should be in motion already yeah tempted to okay i can't tell is that a glare or you got something on your i don't know i can't tell if it's a glare it must be a glare (laughs) okay um you know so you know how to make a kleenex dance the uh put a little boogie in it yeah okay (laughs) so (laughs) uh Two well, weeks ago, I would have said, "Yeah, well, you better refinance." Uh, well, I, all right. So, so then and the topic for that I just texted to the radio show for tomorrow's interview is: Is it too late to refinance? Because thirty-year mortgage. Well, ask that question. Four percent. That's, a, that's an ever that's an ever evergreen question. Yeah, but so, wouldn't it be situational? No. You, you, right now? you you give them you give them the tools to make the decision. You look at your current interest rate on your mortgage. Yeah. You you call the yeah, bank. Yeah, 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 you yeah. you call your lender. You say this is this is how you would this is how you'd make that determination. Should I take action on this right now? Because to me, some people the 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 first step is roll everything together to one low monthly payment. The problem is that's a that's a symptom solver, not a problem solver mm-hmm. for the show. Yeah. Before we get into any of that. Yeah. What are the ways you would pay your mortgage off early if you wanted to? Sweet. Let, right let's hit that right after we talk about refi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ready? Kevin really wants to talk about refinances <laughs> at the moment. We're we're gonna stick to the game plan though. We're gonna we're gonna talk about whether you should how, how you should pay off your mortgage early if you're hoping to do so by retirement. We'll probably talk about refinances as well. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on the YouTube channel. Go check it out. We You just get all the bonus content as well in between segments, which well, last time was just a little rich right there. So make sure you check that out. Uh, go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show. We're right there. Follow us and turn on notifications. All right, so we're talking about if if you have a mortgage and the current term is that it's going to last into retirement and you work with your 
yes, this like this is the order, guys. That's why I cut myself off here. If that's your situation, work with your certified financial planner and see, should I pay this thing off before retirement? And the reason why I would start there is if you just say, okay, I'm going to try and pay it off before retirement. And that means you you aren't saving up as much as you need to into tax shelters or doing some other things financially that maybe in your situation should take a higher priority, then paying the mortgage off early would be a huge mistake. So work with your CFP first. And then if they determine, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's, figure out how to pay this thing off by retirement, what are the best strategies to consider? Josh, you want to lead us off here? You know, I, I might kind of expand the question and say, first, is there other debt in your life that you need to be tackling first? Mm. Um, you know, maybe there's some credit card debt or a car loan. Maybe you've helped your kids with college and you're carrying a parent loan or something. Maybe, maybe there's a second mortgage on the house, a home equity line or something. Um, you know, we, we like to attack debt using a debt snowball approach, where you actually begin with the smallest balance and uh, take any available cash flow and apply it to that balance so that you just melt that thing quickly and it's gone. And in doing so, you're freeing up the payment that that obligation that was attached to that debt can now be redirected to something better in your life or something different in your life. And in a debt snowball strategy, it would be the next highest balance. And you just work your way up the balances, up the debts, and eventually, most people have the mortgage as the last item on the list. Mm -hmm. And if you've diligently been freeing up cash flow and and uh, opening up um, opportunities to pay extra on your mortgage, those last years that you hold, hold your mortgage, you can really accelerate it quickly if that's the right strategy for you. Yeah. Some people need to do the debt snowball right up to the mortgage and stop and use that freed up cash flow to play some catch up on their retirement savings or some other goals that they have. So th this is where th there is no one size fits all other than the one size fits all is you need a financial plan. Yeah. And we would argue that you need a certified financial planner helping you build it and helping you coach along the way. All right, so you've done that plan. The mortgage, you can pay it off early. Let's figure out how to do it. The first the first way that I would recommend that you is the story that I mentioned. That is, well, figure out when you want to retire. Therefore, that's your term. That's the length of time that you have. And do that reverse calculation to determine, all right, how much extra do you need to put on the mortgage every single month to, to get this thing paid off by retirement? And that see if then that fits inside the monthly budget. And if it does, that's the plan that I would work. That to me, that, that'd be the number one suggestion is recalculate yeah. what should your mortgage payment be and start paying that amount. Yeah, and if it doesn't fit within the monthly budget, rework the monthly budget. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the question is, do I have an income problem or an expense problem? But if that's, again, this is all about resource allocation and prioritization. And when you have two people pull on, pulling on the same side of the rope and super motivated, it is so rewarding. There's such a great like release in your brain when you are doing that thing. Yeah. The uh, a, Another way to do that is actually go through a formal process of refinancing to a certain date, uh, right? So Sounds if, like we should talk about that, that Maybe we will in just <laughs> wow. a second. Um, and so if you're 15 years out from retirement or your retirement's going to be in 10 or 15 years, maybe just refinancing to a 15-year note. So then you then you know, okay, this thing's on autopilot. I don't need to hustle and put extra on it. Now, in a way, refinancing to a shorter-term mortgage is a way of paying more, most likely, depending yeah, on your situation. Payments but, bigger, right? Yeah, but but that would be that'd be another way to consider it. Um, I, I agree with that. The, the thing to keep in mind, though, before you just rush out and refinance, you need to also recognize that that first option of paying extra on the mortgage is sometimes the better idea. And it's simply because refinancing brings with it some closing costs. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will roll those closing costs back into the mortgage. The, the new loan balance will actually be higher than what you started with. So you're actually kind of taking some steps backwards. But then because of the larger monthly payments, you're going to be accelerating forward. Eventually, you catch up to where you would have been anyway, yep. and then you get ahead. Well, the question I would always be asking is, how long is it going to take you to get caught back up? And are you confident you're going to be in the house that long, for starters? Yep. Um, but, but also, what will it ultimately save you? Because you might be able to achieve the same thing or close to the same thing by just doing the first idea of paying extra on the mortgage. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and another way to get the house paid off sooner, and this would be if you run that 
calculation to determine, all right, how much would your new monthly payment need to be in order to get this thing paid off by the time you want to retire? If that does not fit in your budget, you try to re- rework the budget and you say, it's not worth it. You know, this we'd be cutting some other things that we don't want to cut. Then the other way is to either sell other assets to pay down the mortgage or use some other income, some bonus income, some pennies from heaven, like maybe, you know, a, a, a quarterly bonus, annual bonus, a surprise tax refund, or selling something around the house that you didn't really need, something like that, using some other assets to look at, well, when those dollars are freed up, do they go towards you know something else or should they go and chunk down the mortgage? But the reason why you need it to be customized for your situation is when you have his and her social security and his and her pension, I mean, that's a little bit of a unicorn these days, <laughs> but those still exist. Those people might not need to pay off their mortgage. Right. Now, you might want to uh, talk about refinancing. Where it doesn't sound like we're going to get into that in this <laughs> segment, of course. But um, you, you might want to consider how, do you, how is your debt structured? But I mean, the, the, the problem is a lot of times people get to retirement the year they retire. And, and I've seen this, okay, I'm working till July. I'm getting a severance payment and I'm getting a year of severance. Okay, sweet. So I've got one and a half times my normal salary. And then I say, but I've got these two car loans and a mortgage, and I want to take the money out of my retirement plan this year Mm -hmm. and pay that off. And that is not, typically, that's not a great strategy. From a tax standpoint. Uh, Exactly. Because all those dollars coming out of the retirement plan, if it is a, a traditional 401k or a traditional IRA, that's all going to be treated as income on top of all those other sources that Kevin was just mentioning. But it is, it's probably the most common question that we, we get. As people get close to retirement and they still have a mortgage, they feel like, hey, I, I need to just get that thing wiped out before I, my paycheck goes away. Yeah. Uh, shouldn't I just go cash in $50,000 out of my IRA or out of my retirement account and to, to pay off a $50,000 um, mortgage balance? Well, it's not 50000 that you have to pull out of the account it's much more than that because of the tax hit that you're going to take. Yep. And if, if it pushes you into a, a higher tax bracket or you cross certain thresholds and in income and start losing some, some tax savings that you would have otherwise gotten, now it's costing you even more. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Another way, and we hear this a lot, Kevin brought it up earlier, another way that you could think of paying the mortgage off before retirement is selling the house, downsizing the house. However, typically at that stage in life, you're looking for a house that's maybe more updated, has less maintenance, and likely a ranch and so on, houses that go for a premium. And so oftentimes downsizing doesn't necessarily mean down pricing or down costing. And therefore, your mortgage, it's not a foolproof plan to get out from under that mortgage because that that retirement home might cost more than what you think. The big theme, guys, and I I think you're hearing this, is work with your CFP to see what the right approach is for you. If it is best to still have a mortgage in retirement, great, don't feel any guilt. But if you should pay that thing off early, work with your CFP to customize some strategies, help you get there. All right, we've got more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Got there. Uh, I mean, we can talk about refinance and we haven't hit, is there a tax reason why I shouldn't pay off my mortgage? Yeah, I tried to go there in the first segment, kind of got slapped down. So. <laughs> <laughs> you missed your opportunity in the That's, third one. Jeez. Yeah. So you want to hit that and then we'll get into questions? Or do you just want to transition into questions now? I don't know. I, it, I was just looking to see if there's a question related to this topic in any way. Something about a house here, Deborah. I don't know if it has anything to do with a mortgage, though. I uh, I, I, anyone uh, that I have highlighted in red, I'm sort of keeping for an insurance. Oh, gotcha. Show. Chad, are we seeing our what that we're doing that again? So. Okay, so maybe we can be. All right. Yeah, I think. I, well, it's your call, Mikey B. I I could easily see going, you know, uh, starting and then hitting a, a question or two in the speed round. Yep. We do have a lot piling up here. Yeah. Well, okay. Let's, uh, let's, let's at least hit the tax item first, and then we'll get into the question. I can use that as a segue 
to get us into questions. And so. where are you going? Which question hey, on the list? Dude, okay, listen. So someone other than me who might be able to do it more eloquently needs to re-say what I said about the six areas of financial planning and how it touches all of them and that uh, uh, work with a financial planner and make sure they're certified. Do you know how many people, the folks, I mean, they're, the folks that came in, all these people, like they have professionals in their lives that would fall under the heading of financial advisors. They don't do it. Mm-hmm. They don't do financial planning. I would vote to not go through all six again. Oh, my word. <laughs> but... <laughs> I mean, just in no, the, if, I, we, we've got to end no, the topic at least yeah, go, pointing so, back to the no, no, I, right. so financial listen, planning. I, at least. The best idea is already on the table, so let's just <laughs> let's do what you guys want to do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I will – then I'll, I'll kick us off, yeah, and then did, one of you guys no, just, take it. Or, and and I'm, I'm fine with a summary. But I don't care. Okay. Do you want to just summarize? I would have one of you guys do it. I'll, I'll open us and then. Well, I kind of already did. So, Josh, do you want to just take a crack? At I don't it? care. So, are here's we the not thing: going any deeper into the tax stuff? Or? I, well, no, I, we no, we should go into the tax. No, we should. To me, I'd, I'd summarize because uh, we don't want to have the full blooming onion there and do all six talk, you know, in depth in all six areas. But then say we the the tax area that we got knocked off of in the first uh, segment. Like, let's just like retouch that one and then hit questions. Is that what you're thinking? No. I would uh, summarize gonna, after uh, the I'm, tax. Yes. I'll drive. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> How many hosts do we have on this show? Seven. Right. <laughs> Ready? Thanks for being with us. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFC studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. If you've missed anything, good news. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on podcast. Wherever you listen, just search the Wise Money Show. Do me a favor when you get there. Subscribe to it and then rate the program and and leave comments. That's helpful feedback for us. Helps other people find the content as well. We appreciate it. So, all right. So we've been talking about whether it makes sense to have a mortgage in retirement or not. And it it may make sense. It may not. You've got to work with your CFP because as Kevin shared earlier, all six areas of your financial life, that's the perspective you've got to take. Anytime you're making a financial decision is how is this going to impact the other areas of my financial life? And then of all the range of choices, which one is going to bring the most synergy, bring the most positive impact to as many of those six areas as possible? Having a mortgage in retirement definitely is going to hit all six. We we touched on that earlier. So um, so make sure you're working with your CFP. Make sure that CFP is a CFP, not just a financial planner. And I'm doing air quotes there, right? There's a lot of financial planners, financial professionals hold themselves out that way that aren't CFPs and don't do comprehensive financial planning. So they don't give a lick about whether you pay your mortgage off or not. They want to talk to you about investing that money, right? Don't, don't work with them. Do, do comprehensive financial planning. Now, as we turn into listener questions, one common question that we get as we're working with folks uh, about paying off their mortgage or should we pay it off early is, well, am I going to lose a tax benefit? Will I give up a tax benefit if I pay off my mortgage early? So before we get into full listener questions, let's hit that question. Yeah, that's usually a question that comes from a longtime homeowner who's been filing a lot of tax returns over the years, and they know that mortgage interest and your real estate taxes, some of these expenses that are tied to your home have traditionally been a tax write-off. They still are today for some people. Yeah. Most Americans, though, the, the huge majority of Americans are no longer filing a Schedule A or an itemized deduction when they, when they file their tax returns. In other words, they're not totaling up things like medical expenses and real estate taxes and charitable gifts and things like they traditionally did. Instead, they're taking a standard deduction that the government's offering to all taxpayers, whether you're married or an individual. There's a number that you get to just take as a write-off on your return right away. But you give up the ability, or that's a trade, I guess you could say, for the ability to go build your own. You would only, only use that standard deduction if it's better than what you could come up with. 
So many people who maybe previously wrote off their mortgage interest and their real estate taxes and everything, they no longer do. Yeah. And so, in other words, if your mortgage went away and you never had that write-off again, that's okay because it's already been replaced with something better anyway. The other thing, and this is going to be tricky to explain on the airwaves, and I know that's the case because as I try to explain this face-to-face, I usually get about one out of three times someone actually understands what I'm saying. <laughs> let, me get, let me give it a shot. The other issue is even if you are itemizing, the tax benefit is just a percentage of the interest cost that you're paying. So basically, the interest that you're paying on your mortgage is a cost to you. That's money out of your pocket that's going to the bank, okay? That becomes a deduction on your tax return, meaning the tax benefit is only a fraction of the interest that you're paying. Sure. So just avoid paying the interest altogether. And, And, you know, that's better than keep continuing to pay the interest and getting a fraction of that as a tax benefit. The other tax question that people bring up, and it sounds the same, we're talking income tax, is property taxes. Well, if I pay the if I pay the mortgage off, is that going to make my property taxes go up double? And, uh, you know, it depends on your county where you live. I would doubt it, though, at least in in our neck of the woods, having that house be your primary residence, you get something called the homestead deduction, and that cuts your property taxes by nearly in half. Having a mortgage on the property is usually a $50 a year benefit, something like that. And then you've got to look at the fine fine print to see, well, having a home equity line open, is that considered a, a, a mortgage? And therefore, you get that extra little benefit on your property taxes? Or do you need to actually have a balance? Work with your CFP, work with your county on that, see see what it, uh, what the wise thing is to do there. Sound good? All right, let's get into it. First question here, uh, it comes from Joe on the YouTube channel. This will sound a little strange, so I'm not going to be able to get into all the specific details, but I have a 401k which I can no longer make contributions to. That's not that strange. That's pretty, that's pretty normal. Uh, it's an old 401k, something like that. And the assets must remain in the plan until I hit age 59 and a half. Now, that's unusual. Yeah. So it's a 401k I can't contribute to. But and I, I can't roll the money I out. can't roll the money over. I'm not 100% sure on that. Work with your CFP, Joe. So still five years away from that magical age. What approach do you suggest for investing these dollars? What's the right asset allocation since I'm unable to buy the dip? Well, yeah, in a 401k, that that those are not the dollars to buy the dip. The 401k, according to kind of the way we see it, your 401k are are the buy, hold, and rebalance assets. One of the most important financial decisions you're going to make in your lifetime is what is your asset allocation, which is a which is a fancy term for saying what's the recipe that you're going to follow when you invest. And so, Joe, I would not look at those dollars and say, hey, I want to buy the dip. I You want to be a holder. Uh, hold on for dear life. You know that was a typo, right? And, you know, so the, the, the myth is, is going to grow here, but someone was actually really late at night trying to type hold, H-O-L-D, about this is going to be the strategy for tomorrow, guys. Let's just hold on. And he apparently, it apparently comes straight from him, he typoed and misspelled hold and did H-O-D-L, and then people have just run with it. Yeah, I can ba- I, ba- judging by the uh, rolling of the eyes, I can see that you're <laughs> agreeing. Yeah. Sounds like an urban yeah. legend to I, me. I'm I don't a believer know. there, Mike. <laughs> so listen. So here's, the, but Joe, the idea is you want to buy and hold in your 401k. That, and then you want to, if you want to buy the dip, because that's investing. Buying the dip is trading. Yeah. So if you want to trade, your 401k probably isn't the best platform to do your trading in. And what we would say is. Be careful about the trading. Um, most people, if you want to learn about trading, I would encourage you to, you know, if you want to, if you want a small fortune from trading, mm-hmm. start with a large one. But I, I would say if you're gonna if you're gonna do some sort of day trading, start with thirty thousand or fifty thousand, something like that, where you say, if I lost this, I would not jeopardize my entire financial future. Now that those numbers are relative, so you know different people in different situations, it might be start with a thousand. But the, here's the question that I when I that I ask people when they talk about, hey, should I do 
day trading or whatnot. I'm like, well, what do you want to own you? Mm-hmm. What do you want your mind to be occupied by? And what do you want to be possessed by? Because I can tell you this, if you are trading, if you're a trader, not an investor, a trader, it's likely you, have you ever walked through the casino to get to your hotel room and you see those people sitting there and they look like they've been sitting there for 14 days? <laughs> um, that's what traders kind of end up like. And I'm like, well, if you, if, you're, if you have a great trading strategy and you're trading enough money to make it worth it, but a lot of times people, once they figure out how owned they will actually be by doing trading, they say, hey, I'm out. Because it's even if I make, you know, Uh, 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 50% on this money in one year, that's not enough to make a meaningful difference. And I'm not willing to sell myself for that amount of money. Mm -hmm. I I agree with everything you just said. I I think there's also a second way that we could interpret this question. And it has to do with the fact that Joe said in his question that he can't contribute to this 401k. So maybe it is a a former employer, the money's just kind of stuck. It's sitting idle there. He needs to, as Kevin says, buy the right mix of investments and let it ride for that long-term goal that you set out to to save for anyway. But um, the fact that he's not contributing anymore means that he's he doesn't have steady contributions going in every couple weeks like he once did, which means the ups and the downs of the market are not benefiting him with new money going in into the account. You know, we call that dollar cost averaging, where you're just slowly dripping the same amount or approximately the same amount in over time, and you do catch the dips uh, often when when that's happening. Well, you don't have to be working for an employer that has a 401k to still be benefiting from dollar cost averaging. You know, you could set up your own IRA or your own Roth IRA as long as you have earned income and or, or paycheck type money then you could be contributing even if your employer doesn't uh, offer this type of a plan. Hopefully they do. It makes it a little easier when it's coming right out of a paycheck and you don't have to think about it. But you can set up a monthly contribution out of your bank account into one of these individual retirement accounts by the maybe the exact same mutual funds that you would have been buying in that old 401k if that was appropriate. I would recommend that you be buying something that's complementary or doing a strategy that, that fits nicely with those, those 401k dollars but the, the point is, it should all be part of an overall strategy that's part of your certified financial plan, or, or, or the certified financial planner is helping you build, rather. Um, and, and the goal, then, is to make sure that your investments are matching what your long-term goal needs them to match. And the, the slow drip, that steady contribution that you could be doing, uh, do it in a different account if you can't do it in that, in that old 401k. Yeah, and per usual, I answered several of the que- uh, the questions that Joe didn't ask, I, and so so the answer answer the answer to your question: What approach do you suggest for asset allocation? Here's what I would suggest, Joe: I would suggest you look at your 401k, your IRA, your Roth IRA, your HSA that's invested, and if your wife, if you're married, if your wife has those same accounts, because what you want to look at is what should your overall household asset allocation look like. That's right. Mm-hmm. And compare that to that goal that Josh mentioned. If you're saving up for retirement, then compare that to your retirement plan to see, are you taking the right level of risk among all those accounts together to achieve that financial goal? Uh, i got a question here. I think this one might be a little quick. Um, what if you over contribute to an IRA? Does the IRS know about this? And is there a creative way, in quotes, to add more without them knowing. I think it'd be helpful for us to know if you can trick the IRS because I need to save for my medical expenses in the future. Here's the thing, and, <laughs> and um, when you're making a contribution into your IRA, you're gonna need to state which year, which year it's for. So the, the custodian or the bank or the financial institution, wherever your IRA is, they're tracking this anyway, and they're not going to let you over contribute. Right. If you if you over contribute and they don't catch it, it's because well your income was too high and you shouldn't have been able to contribute anyway. But they're not going to let you put in more than the six thousand. Or you or the contributed seven. to different custodians and they don't know what each other are doing. So then here's how you here's how the IRS knows. They issue something called a fifty four ninety eight, and that's a tax form that's reported that's given to you. Usually you'll get one in January and then another one in May. By the way, um, but they're going to send you a copy 
but they're going to send one to the IRS as well. Mm-hmm. And so there's there's unfortunately no way around this. N- you know, nice try. It would be nice to just ignore those rules. Not possible. Yeah. So one in January to re- reflect last year's, and one in May to reflect what you did from January through April fifteenth for right. last year. All right. Thanks, everyone. That's all the time we have for today. On behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, all of us at KHG, have a great, great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.